Hello, hello. It is Sarah Waggle, astrologer and leadership coach here for your sun and rising signs for Scorpio season. So what this means is that no matter whether you're a Scorpio or not, you can watch this video because I will be covering all 12 zodiac signs, whether that is for your sun sign or your rising sign. If you are unfamiliar with your rising sign, book a reading with me. We'll figure it out. Um, but this 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 video covers the sun moving through the sign of Scorpio. And so we all have all 12 zodiac signs in our natal charts. So this does apply to you. I will talk about the new moon in Scorpio as well as the full moon in Taurus. And uh also, and um, what else? Okay, let's just get right into it, shall we? Okay. Um, so Scorpio is a fixed water sign. So fixed meaning it is steady, right? <clears throat> fixed. We had Libra. That's a cardinal sign. That was sort of our taking off into fall. Now we're steady into fall season uh, before we get into Sagittarius, which will take us into um, winter season. Um, those are both on the Northern Hemisphere, of course. Um, and so because this is a water sign, this is a feminine sign, believe it or not. Um, but water is always refer is always feminine energy. And so uh, this is emotional. This is a current. So we'll talk about money and money systems. Um, this Scorpio is on the Scorpio Taurus axis. So if you're familiar with Taurus, this is the opposition or the opposing sign to Taurus. And so um, that's, that's that. And Taurus is definitely talking about money. Scorpio is talking about money in more of an intimate or um, intertwined sort of way. Um, in other words, like Taurus is sort of like your money. This is talking about like inheritance or taxes or your intimate relationships that um, involve money, contracts, um, business type relationships, but uh, but more importantly, like marriage um, or just intimate, like your partnerships with money and things like that. So that's what we're talking about with regard to Scorpio. Um, and I forgot my disclaimer at the beginning. This is not medical, legal, or financial advice. Um, this is simply me reading astrology. Um, and so on the more medical side of things, Scorpio is um, the movement of systems of things that move out of your body. So like urination, um, defecation, sinuses that drain, things like that. Um, and so it's, it's, it rules things like the urinary tract or, uh, the intestines, the anus, the nose, um, things like that. And we're also, we're also dealing with, of course, the genitals, um, the prostate, the cervix, um, you know, reproductive organs, things like that. So the lower frequency, we're kind of dealing with the sacral chakra quite a bit here. The lower frequency of the sacral chakra is sexual energy. And I'm not dissing on sex. I'm not saying sex is bad. I'm saying that's a lower vibration, right? Versus a higher vibration, the other part or the other frequency of the sacral chakra is creativity, right? So um, people get overly emotional. It might be an opportunity to have an outlet to create, right? Um, and so, um, you know, this is also the season of shadows. And um, I suppose you want to say like the thinning of the veil between the, uh, the um, those of us currently on the planet and those of us who have gone before us, um, because we definitely talk about Halloween and the spirits. And of course, there's uh, Dio de los Muertos. I hope I said that correctly. And I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, you know, so we have like All Saints Day and things like that. And so we're also dealing with quite a bit of potentially like psychic mediumship um, and being able to psychically communicate with other with with people who have since passed um, types of energy. Uh, I do feel like this particular Scorpio season, we are going to see a lot of people. Um, OK, here's how I want to put this, because there's people who are embracing their ability to be psychic, whether that is a mediumship or, um, you know, foreseeing or 
or, 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 um, you know, you're, you feel like you're kind of all knowing, all smelling, all, you know, you've got all your clairs. There's also that potential for people to, to have some mental instability because we've been conditioned that these types of gifts are, are weird or, or, um, unacceptable or whatever. Um, and so there's that to consider too, is that for people who, whose clairs may be coming online, they may be overwhelmed by what they notice. Um, you know, whether that is like, you notice things are in different, different places or lights coming on or, um, you know, things like that, that may, that may freak people out, to be honest, because many of uh, many people in the conditioned or programmed world, um, are, you know, they kind of been taught that humans aren't capable of doing that. And it's only seen in horror movies. Okay. So to debunk that we're all capable of it. And to be honest with you, a lot of people who have the capability and, and knowing keep it to themselves because everybody would think we were weird. Um, so this Scorpio season is going to have Mars and Cancer, it's going to have Saturn and Neptune and Pisces. Those are all water signs. I'm bringing this up for a reason because we're going to see interaction um, as we already have with Venus having moved through Scorpio. Mercury is making his way through Scorpio. Um, and so we're having a lot of interaction and conversation, co like cosmic conversation between all of the water signs, which is kind of bringing um this intuitive or psychic or um, tele telepathic or maybe even telekinetic, like all of these types of ways of, of, of communicating or understanding, it's bringing more of them to the surface. So here's what I'm going to say about the Scorpio season. This, is, this very well could be a make or break it time. And the reason that I say that is because people are either ready for the to the next level of, or they're not. And, they're, and, and more than likely, if they're not ready for the next level up, they're not going to the next level up. And I'm not saying you're going to die. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that you're going to stay in the conditioned or programmed world, the matrix, if you kind of want to call it that, however you choose to define it. You're not, you know, you're not interested in doing healing work. You're not interested in, um, you know, changing, you know, making significant life changes by way of coaching or therapy or spirituality. This is fine. I'm not criticizing or judging. I'm saying that right now, this Scorpio season, we're really going to see the, the really like line drawn in the sand of who's he, who wants to heal and make life better and lean into love and sovereignty and gratitude um, and those sorts of things and who is going to stay in the fear mongering, um, you know, sort of complaining um, world of, of that we're moving away from, like the planet's moving away from, right? This is the last season that we are going to see Pluto and Capricorn for the rest of our lives. Many people are probably very happy about that. Um, other people might be terrified of Pluto and Aquarius. I'm personally game on. Let's go. Let's do this. I'm tired of this conditioned world where everybody's supposed to be miserable. I'm done with that. I really am. I don't, I, I'm really ready for everybody to experience joy and happiness and understand that they can experience that in life that we get to that we get to be sovereign beings, that we get to follow our own moral code and our own um, way of being. And if it's different and quote unquote weird, then all the better, all the freaking better. I'll tell you right now, personal perspective here. Um, I personally don't care how different you are from me. If you're being authentic, I'm really interested in you, like interested in knowing you and interested in being in your space. Even if I know nothing about what you do with your life, like I don't get your lifestyle. I don't get your this. I don't get, I just, that, that's actually irrelevant to me. It's people who fake and pretend to be something that they're not, that I actually distaste being around. So, um, anywho, okay. So we're dealing with a lot. Uh, I think 
as we move through Scorpio season, many people are going to make choices and decisions that are going to shift things. But I also will say no matter what you think is happening in this moment won't be what's happening by April of next year. And that even goes for the United States presidential election. Doesn't matter who's actually elected in November, probably will not be the person who's president by April. There you go. Um, what else do I want to say? Enjoy Halloween. Um, I know it's fun for a lot of people. I have lots of people who love Halloween season. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Um, I'm not saying Halloween's going to go away. I don't think that'll ever happen because I think there's too many people who enjoy it. Um, and, and that's okay. And I also think that this is the time of year for like spookiness and, um, for spirits and things like that. Um, but anyway, so let's take a look at the charts, uh, and, uh, for the new moon in Scorpio and the full moon in Taurus. Um, I'm excited for this Scorpio season. Cause I'm like, I, I'm one of those people, like I anticipate so hard, almost like too high of expectations, but I anticipate, I'm like, I'm, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, but let's take a look at the charts. I can talk about a few more details. Give me right back. Alrighty. Okay. So here we are. This is the new moon in Scorpio. Um, so this is peaking at nine degrees of Scorpio when the moon conjuncts the sun. And so anything, of course, that you have in your chart around nine degrees of Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, or even of Pisces or Cancer, um, might feel the effect of this new moon. And um, if you want details about your personal chart with regard to this new moon, of course, book a single transit reading with me. Link is below. Um, what else we got going on? So we've got this trine between um, this grand trine. We've got Mars at uh, 29 degrees of Cancer, we've got Mercury at 28 degrees of Scorpio, and we have Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces. Um, and also notably, Mercury is at 28 Scorpio opposite uh, Uranus at 25. Now, some of these aren't quite exact, like 28 and 25. So Mercury would have passed Uranus probably within about 24 hours, maybe 48 hours prior to the peak of this new moon, but it's still a notable transit because the effect of which will probably still be felt. But the other thing we got going on is this opposition between Pluto and Mars. This has been ongoing. We've been feeling this since probably uh, the... Um, 17th, 16th, 17th of October. This has been building. Um, this is just a, it's a power struggle. Um, Mars and Pluto co-rule Scorpio in modern astrology. Traditionally, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. Um, and so that's kind of important to note um, because they they both like power. Um and they, they also both like, like Pluto likes to reveal shadows. This is a 29 degree opposition. 29 is a, um, the most potent or mature degree of any zodiac sign. So it's the 29th degree of Capricorn. Capricorn is system structures, uh, rules, um, authority, uh, that sort of thing in Pluto's there. And then in Mars, in Cancer, Cancer is, is you, you nurturing yourself. It's your body. It's maternal. It's, it's, um, what else can they say about it? It's the home of the moon. Um, and while Mars isn't as strong there, there's still sort of this, like, um, <laughs> I want to say like viciousness, but I don't know viciousness, but like uh, almost like this desire to take care of yourself, to be your own authority, to be your own sovereign self. Um, and so we've got that going on. My feel of this new moon um, with this Mercury opposition to Uranus um, and Mars opposition to Pluto, and then this water trine between Mars, 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 
Mercury and Neptune. I feel like if you have been doing shadow work and you've been healing yourself and you've been working on yourself, you probably get some sort of intuitive, um, like brilliant new creative um, piece, download, uh, nudge from your work guides, from your higher self. But I feel also, since we're dealing with kind of a split, is that if you if you have not been doing healing work, you might get a piece of information that just feels like the worst possible thing, right? Because we have a power struggle happening, and it's not only in our personal lives, but it's happening on the grand stage as well, the world stage, the global stage with leadership, with government, um, and things like that. And, you know, things are happening, things are coming undone, whether you notice it or not in your world, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. And also note that it's not just happening in the United States, but it's happening all across the world. Okay. Um, it just happens to be the reason the U S is on the focus is because, um, the U.S. is Pluto in the United States chart, the chart that's of the signing of the Declaration of Independence from 1776, is a 27-degree Pluto chart. Um, and so we've been dealing with um, Pluto passing that area of the zodiac for the first time since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. That's why the United States is in such the conversation about this Pluto transit. So... Um, you know, things are things are kind of reaching their sort of um, a revolution point. Uh, so, yeah. So and we're almost done. This this new moon peaks on November one and Pluto moves into Aquarius on November 19th. So we're almost there. Um, and so don't be surprised if shortly around November 1st, something comes to you. Like I said, it could be an intuitive nudge or a nudge from your guides and you're like, oh, epiphany, like Matt, like some sort of outside the box nudge of hit of intuition, creativity um, or something like that. But also I feel like because we're dealing with Scorpio and something hidden in the shadows, it, this could be a piece of information that just uh, rocks your world. Does that make sense? And it could be rock your world in a good way, but it also could be rock your world in a holy crap. Are you freaking kidding me? Um, so yeah. All right. Um, what else do we have that we need to talk about? Uh, that's kind of it for this chart. Um, so let's take a look at the full moon, which peaks on November 15th. Um, at 3.30 ish in the afternoon on, uh, yeah, November 15th. So this is well after the election, which is on the November 5th, I think. Um, what have we got going on here? We have the sun at 24 degrees of Scorpio on the dot. In fact, 24 and zero minutes Scorpio opposite the moon at 24 minutes and zero zero or 24 degrees and zero minutes of Taurus um, conjunct Uranus and Taurus. Okay. So we're dealing with that. We've got Mars made his way into Leo at three degrees and he's making it this short little, the short little line that's called a sextile. That's just a, a, a um, short, shorter or a smaller, um, um, aspect from a, a trine. So it's harmonious trine, anything most, I usually try and do the harmonious stuff in blue. Um, so Mars is trining the North node and sex telling the South node. Um, so we've got that going on. I thought there was something else that I wanted to talk about. Um, we have uh, Pluto just minutes away, days away. This is on the 15th. And so we've got about four days left of, um, Pluto in Capricorn at this point, but you'll notice Saturn is direct. Saturn's over here at 12 degrees of Pisces on the uh, left-hand side of the screen, I think. Left? Yeah, okay. Um, 
So Saturn's direct. We've got Mercury having just squared Saturn. So um, conversations are going to be happening. So whatever epiphany sort of happened for you um, around that new moon in Scorpio, you know, now the conversations have to happen um, and whatnot. So um, whatever conversations you have not had up until this point uh, probably need to be had um, at this point. Um you know, this is the middle of November. So we are what, uh, December, January, February, March, April, five months away. Um, and even less than that, because the eclipses for 2025 start in March, um, of, of, of 2025. And so, um, you know, there's kind of this point where it's like, okay, are you sure? Um, you know, and what are you unwilling to see or face about your desires, about your, uh, commitments about your relationship, about yourself even. Um, and so, you know, this is kind of everything sort of culminating from everything that I've been talking about, like this entire year, 2024 is like, now it's kind of, you know, Scorpio sort of the, okay, now it's time to go time to do the things. It's time to take the action. You've been dancing around this issue of whether or not to, uh, it's the, um, what the hell is that? Um, Jimmy Durante, uh, do you ever have the feeling, uh, do I stay or do I go? Um, Jimmy Durante, somebody knows who I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, and so I am not that old, but it was in a movie I watched one time. Uh, <laughs> um, but okay, so we have Venus well into Capricorn. It looks like Venus and Pluto are bookending Capricorn. Um, and so, and and uh, we'll also note that Mercury is more than halfway through Sagittarius. Once we get into Sagittarius season, uh, Mercury will go retrograde. So that's something to look forward to for Sagittarius season. Um, what else we have? Mars is three degrees away from turning retrograde. However, this is about three weeks prior to Mars's retrograde. Um, that starts, I believe, December 6th. Uh, so we've got that going on. What else is going on? Chiron, don't really need to talk about him just yet. He is at 19, where he will station direct, but that's not till the end of the year. So I think we're kind of good uh, with this full moon, um, this is the Taurus Scorpio axis. We do have money. And if you think about, I talked about with medical astrology, uh, that, you know, the, the, the systems and systems, body systems of Scorpio are, you know, like urination, defecation, um, you know, like the nose and sinuses and things like that. And so we want to think about with money, it's the current, right? You want to keep things moving when you're in a water sign. You want to keep fluids moving. Um, this is also where I get to talk about mental constipation because you can not only be physically constipated in your bowels, but you can be mentally constipated because you're trying to overthink, overanalyze, over, uh, you know, over, over kind of pick at something, um, overanalyze it, uh, not in the kind of the similar to a Virgo, but more as in, um, you're cramming too much in. And so, um, you know, too many details, too many, uh, you know, so that your brain's not flowing or your bowels are not flowing, right. Sort of same thing. Um, and so, you know, you kind of want to be aware of that. Okay. Let's get out of the chart. There we go. So that's what Scorpio season looks like. Um, my lighting looks weird. I've tried to co cover out as much of the sunlight as I can, but um, time of day is a thing. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, uh, I think that's it for all of that. Of course, if you want to book a reading with me, the wellness, um, the wellness astrology consultation is available. Um, which is how I can look at your natal chart and make a, give you, uh, information about best nutrition, uh, exercise and body systems to be aware of according to your natal chart, single transit reading. If you want to know how the Scorpio new moon Taurus full moon will affect you. If you want to know what that Mars retrograde looks like for your chart, uh, if you want to know what the nodes are going to look like, uh, going through Pisces Virgo starting in January of 2025. Um, we can talk about that. 
So that's a single transit reading. If you are just wanting to dip your toes in, sun, moon, rising readings are still available as well. And if you're just ready to dive in head first and you want your full chart reading, we got that one available too. Um, I will be making changes eventually, but probably not until the beginning of next year. Um, might wait till after the Mars retrograde before I make any more changes to my offerings at this time. Um, just because uh, uh, we'll see how this Mars retrograde goes. <laughs> um but okay, let's get into your sun and rising signs and go from there. So of course, these are time stamped for your convenience. Um, so you can skip ahead to your rising sign and then skip backward to your sun sign or however that works for you. Highly recommend rising sign first, then your sun sign um, and all of the things. If you are advanced and you want to look at your Saturn, your Mercury, your Venus, just go by the uh, archetypal or characteristic of those planets. Um, if you are not advanced, don't worry about it. Um, rising sign and sun sign are perfectly fine. Um, what else? I think that's it. Let's get into it, shall we? All right, let's do this. Aries, this is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. Of course, this is for the Scorpio new moon and the Taurus full moon. Um, Aries, this is your, uh, Scorpio is your, um, just lost my train of thought, eighth house and second house is Taurus. There we go. So eighth house is contractual relationships. So intimate relationships, both sexual and uh, uh, contractual. Um, there's also some level of like financial situation here. Um, and so this could be a marriage. This could be just your, your current relationship is getting more intense, getting more serious. Um, I also want to just point out that you're also still dealing with the power struggle between um, Mars and Cancer, your fourth house, your home, your foundation, and your and Pluto in your 10th house, which is about your career your public achievements and whatnot. And so you've kind of got this struggle going on with your second house and your fourth house versus your eighth house and your 10th house. And I don't want to, I don't mean that in like a versus as in one's better, better than the other, but there is this level of like, are you in relationships or in work situations that are truly providing you with value or that value you for your um, your skills, your talents, and is your home life providing the foundation that you need, the emotional stability that you need for your deepest relationships, your closest relationships, your partner, your, you know, your co your, your partner, or any sort of contractual relationships that you have. So maybe your business partner or something like that. Um, and then, you know, Pluto's almost done in your 10th house. <clears throat> So you've been through this whole uh, transformation since 2008 with your work, with your public appearance and your, you know, are you who you want to be coming out of this Pluto transit since 2008? Um, do you have like the, the, you know, the credit or the acknowledgement that you want or that you thought you would have? Uh, coming out of this. Um, if, if not, like you've got, you know, I mean, you know, Pluto's going to move into your 11th eventually. And, uh, you know, we're going to obviously the time's going to keep moving on. But this is really a good opportunity to kind of like reevaluate if you need to, like, where are all of your relationships? Is your foundation as sturdy and solid as you think it is? Um, that sort of thing. I got a new deck. So we've got this is called the Dark Magic, magic with a K. So it's Dark Magic, M A G I C K. Um, it's it's kind of, I don't know if you can see it. But anyway, uh, I like it because it deals with shadow work and thought it was like perfectly appropriate for Scorpio season because Scorpio is about shadows. So anyway, um, from the dark magic deck, you got born. And this is a reminder that every day is a new opportunity. And so um, you may want to do some things like carry some tumor. Tur I can never say it correctly. And I'm so sorry. Tourmaline, black tourmaline, but it doesn't specify black. I'm reading this straight from the book, y'all. So there you go. Um, but you want to carry... Um, 
Okay, termal, tourmaline. Okay, Tur carry tourmaline because it helps you to ground um, and also kind of harnesses your energy so that you can actually do things rather than sit. And it actually does say sit and scroll, do things rather than sitting and scrolling Insta and TikTok. It actually says that. Um, <clears throat> you also want to ground yourself by putting your bare feet on the floor. Um, and ground yourself and clear the brain fog by drinking mugwort tea. Um, you could also look up mugwort and see alternatives if you do not have mugwort um, available to you. But the point is, is get the clarity that you need um, by putting some things in place, by putting your feet on the ground, by um, carrying a crystal with you that helps you feel like you're less foggy. And that helps you harness and ground your energy. So what's I got for Aries? Taurus, sun and rising. This is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on the 15th. And so uh, if you do have planets or points around either nine degrees of Scorpio or 24 degrees of Taurus, um, these may directly affect you. Scorpio is your seventh house of relationships, partnerships, and this is your relationship with anything. This could be your relationship to your fitness routine, your relationship to your, um, your work, your relationship to your phone, your relationship to scrolling, um, on your phone, um, and whatnot. And so, uh, you're also dealing with the, um, the third house, ninth house axis with regard to that Mars Pluto opposition um, and Pluto almost being complete in your ninth house. And so, you know, it's kind of like taking a look back since 2008. What have you learned as far as like higher education? Or maybe you've become a teacher, maybe you've become a writer in that time. Um, and this is kind of closing that up by the end of Scorpio season. Um, and so, uh, you know, what, what, what have you, what have you done there? And what do you still need to like loose ends that you may need to tie up? And then what is shifting in your relationships and partnerships? What are you maybe still insecure about? Scorpio can bring out um, our shadows, our insecurities with regard to relationships. Are you building the relationships that you really want? Um, you know, and you, are you showing the best version of you for the relationships that you want? So really this could be about your authenticity and, you know, um, you know, whatnot. And so, uh, I'm feeling like a lot of score, a lot of Tauruses have been through some self-discovery. And so now they're kind of like this brand new version and, you know, that can alter our relationships because when we tune into a new version of ourself, most many people, um, you know, kind of don't know how to be and whatnot. Um, and so from the, um, dark magic deck, you got shine, um, and this is making yourself seen. And I believe this, I think this is about, you know, making yourself seen, making your, you know, are you confident in who you are? Um, maybe it's a different version of you every time you turn around, but are you still confident in who that person is no matter what, you know, it's like, um, with Scorpio, we can kind of present the self doubt well piece along with the confidence piece. Um, and so maybe avoiding the caveat of, you know, this is who I am, but I, you know, I know I've been through a lot blah, 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 like leaving out that and just allowing yourself to shine in your current version and your current way of being um, and whatnot. And the, according to the book, you can carry or wear aquamarine to um, promote positive thinking. You could also drink spearmint tea to also promote positive thoughts. And so, and this could be an opportunity to just journal and find gratitude in your friendships, kind of find gratitude in your partnerships um, and whatnot. So uh, that's what I got for Taurus. All right, Gemini, this is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on November 15th. So this is uh, Scorpio is your sixth house making Taurus your 12th house. Um, and we're also still working with the power struggle between Mars and Pluto. So that would be your second and your eighth house. So you've got a lot of um, what we call malefic houses, right? Houses that are, that can present challenges. Um, and so <clears throat> your daily routines and your, your security with your daily routines 
um, your daily routines, um, Scorpio being your sixth house. So <laughs> to be quite honest with you, you might want to pay attention to like your, your, you know, pre your pooping habits. Um, do you poop regularly? Do you have regular bowel movements? Um, and things like that. Uh, do you, you know, is, 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 you know, it, this is kind of just paying attention to like the way things are leaving your body, detoxing, things like that. Um, and then with that power struggle between Mars in Cancer and Pluto in Capricorn, second house, eighth house. So you're dealing with your self-worth in, in intimate partnerships with um, Pluto. And so you've probably definitely been through it over the last 16 years uh, with Pluto moving through your eighth house. So um, I have it that a lot of Geminis have probably had it with Pluto um, right now. Um but be attentive to what your what what you know you and and your worthiness and your value and um you know who you're choosing to be around who's supporting you throughout like the day to day um type of thing um with Taurus in your twelfth house and that full moon um you know tuning into the things that ground you the things that are good for your body um and things like that. And from the um, uh, dark magic deck, you got pure, um, which is honoring your temple. And so I feel like with Scorpio being your sixth house, like you really got to pay attention to, um, you know, the things that are that you put into your body. Um, so uh, things like that. And then I'm going to read you the crystal that the book recommends for this card. I happen to have a couple of these crystals, not on hand, of course, to show you, but um, so it says carry or wear hematite, uh, which helps the, which helps to absorb negative energy. Um, hematite is considered to be a detoxifying stone aligned with the liver, kidneys, and blood. It also provides support and the yeah, support and courage when you're feeling unhealthy. Or excuse me, when you're feeling vulnerable and vulnerable and tempted. So that's hematite. So definitely recommend hematite. Um, you know, see if that helps by wearing that with wearing it or carrying it with you. It's one of my favorites. Actually, I have a couple of them again, and of course not on hand so I can show you, but, um, the reason that I'm bringing that up is because that sixth house is a health related house. Um, and so with Scorpio, you know, you might want to just, this might be an opportunity to, you know, look into a detox of some sort or another, whether that is a um, kidney detox or liver detox. Again, not medical advice, please consult physician as, you know, medical professional as necessary. But the sixth house is a medical um, or a health related house. And that's where you have Scorpio. And so you could be holding a lot of um, energy in your, um, in those, in those organs and how those organs function. Um, we do tend to hold energy in our physical body. Um, the tea that's recommended for this purification or the pure card is dandelion root tea. Um, not only does that help detox, but, uh, in some of the research that I've done for dandelion root, it also helps with inflammation. Um, so that could be a thing as well. So definitely feel into your body, the functioning of your body um, and all of that and be like attentive to um, your system, your body systems. And this can be affected by who you're around in the, the eighth house being about intimate relationships um, with Pluto there. You know, you've probably been, like I said, you've probably been through it. You're probably like, this is all second nature. I'm kind of over it. Um, I totally get that too. So, um, you know, that's, that's just something to be aware of as we continue to move through the Scorpio season. But for, for sure, it's, you know, 12th house, 6th house, um, 6th house Scorpio, 12th house Taurus. So it really is, you know, maybe doing some rituals around, uh, you know, some, some, um, um, detox or water rituals around the new moon on the first and the full moon on the 15th. So that's what I have for Gemini. 
All right, Cancer, Sun, and Rising Sign, this is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on November 15th. Um, and so we're talking about your fifth house and your 11th house here. Um, and also we're dealing with your first house with Mars uh, in his opposition to Pluto in your seventh house. And so your relationships, you probably, you're probably well over it at this point um, after 16 years of having Pluto in your seventh house. Um, but let's focus on fifth house, 11th house. So fifth house is children, um, inner child wounds. It could also be heart's desire, um, you know, just heart, heart, playful, you know, your heart centeredness, your playfulness. Um, and then Taurus is groups, communities, social media, um, and, and social situations and whatnot. And so you're really feeling into, um, you like you, the fifth house is like, you know, the real you, right. Who you really are. Um, we got the reveal card even from the, um, dark magic deck. Um, and this is all about just revealing your shell, you're revealing your real, your authentic self, showing us who you really are. Um, don't be afraid to be who you are. Even if that means you're like an intuitive psychic, um, even if that means that you really like dark or gothic things, like the weirder, the better at this point, right? We're heading into Pluto and Aquarius soon. And so, um, you know, be who you are because that will create and uh, allow in authentic friendships, authentic relationships. And that would be then your seventh house where Pluto has been and the 11th house where that full moon in Taurus is going to be. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's really this just space of like you showing up as you really are. Um, and even if that means that you are a little playful, maybe you're a little messy, maybe you're a little bit artistic. Um, we really want to see that you know, come in, come out of your crab shell a little bit and really just be who you are. Um, and the reveal card, um, you want to carry or wear tiger's eye because that is a protection stone. Um, it also says to drink thyme herbal tea, um, to support just being authentic and being yourself and all of that I really just would love to see cancers just come out and be who they really are. Like I said, even if that means that you, you know, are able to, you know, enlighten us and show us something about yourself um, that really is who you are. And I get it. There's a lot of us out there who really do hide parts of ourselves from other people because we are afraid of, of the backlash or the judgment of others. And so um, hopefully we are moving into a time and space where judging others is a thing of the past. Um, but there's always going to be one person, right? There's always one person. So that's what I got for cancer. Leo, Leo Sun, Leo Rising. This is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on November 15th. So we are talking about your fourth house, your home, your foundation, your emotional stability, as well as emotional management as and then the opposing 10th house Taurus is your uh, career, your um, public achievement, um, who you are, you know, who you are in the world. Plus, we have the 12th house, 6th house with uh, uh, Pluto finishing up in Capricorn and Mars in Cancer in your 12th house. And so, um, you know, I feel like a lot of Leos um, are experiencing a lot of Claire's coming online with the Cancer in their 12th house and, and Mars really spending a lot of time there. Um, is really kind of awakening a lot for Leos and Leos are kind of feeling the need to go within and to go within, you may want to be more at home and more at peace. Um, and so if your home is not a peaceful place, that's something to consider. Um, and so, you know, one, I, I'm looking at the, the card and I got the ghost card, which is commune with your guides. But what I really wanted to point out was something that I read in the booklet with this card deck. Um, which was as part of the the card description. It says that if you um, get new furniture in your home to cleanse it with incense, um, you can also use um, different crystals to cleanse. 
Um, you know, because if you're getting furniture like secondhand or antique furniture, you're also getting the energy of that new furniture. This goes for clothes. This goes for, you know, anything that you're getting that may be secondhand or used. There's nothing wrong with it. You just want to make sure you cleanse the energy of it. Um, but I feel like with Leo's, there's a lot of introspection happening. Um, you're really focused on yourself, your own, you know, what you are doing for you, what you are, um, you know, what, what's going on with you. Um, and so that new moon could be very revealing about your home situation could give you, you know, maybe you can set some intention around here's how I want my home environment to feel like this is what I want to feel when I'm at home, whether that is at peace or relaxed or comfortable. Um, and if that's not happening, maybe your 10th house is a place to look, your work, um, your career, your public achievement, but also take a look at that 6th house, 12th house situation um, of, of having um, Pluto finishing up in your 6th house. Um, and so, you know, there's some changes that maybe need to happen before Pluto makes its final move into Aquarius on the 19th. Um, and so, you know, um, yeah, I feel like that's all I needed to really say, but, uh, as far as ghost, um, you know, carrying, uh, you can wear white, um, to kind of give you, give yourself that like connection, you know, the blank slate connection with your guides. Uh, it also says to wear, um, or carry a selenite tower, um, and I know different shapes of stones can do different things. Um, so maybe consult like a crystals person, <laughs> um, who may know more than about that than me. Um, and then let's see, lavender and chamomile tea, those both calm your mind and allow you to open up to hearing what your guides are telling you. Um, and so, you know, I also feel like there's a, a, an aspect of this of like silence and still, stillness, which for the few Leos that I know, they're not quiet people. They don't like quiet environments. Um, but this might be an opportunity to really connect with your, with your, with, with the practice of breath work, of silence, of stillness, um, to open up your chakras, to balance your chakras so that you can receive through your crown, your third eye, um, and then ground that in through your solar plexus, your sacral and your root chakra, because maybe there is, there is a new path opening up for you, Leo's, um, but you are not getting quiet enough and your guides are like, how do I reach you? How do I reach you? It's always so loud. It's always, you've always got 900 things going on and that's okay. But sometimes we got to quiet the energy and by quiet the energy, I don't mean just mean turning the volume down, but and I shouldn't say the, the, the I shouldn't say like limited to turning the volume down on like the TV or the radio, but like turning the volume down as far as energy expansion bended, right? Like, again, most of the Leos that I know are constantly on the go. Maybe there's an opportunity to really sit and do and practice like Vipassana or silent meditation, or even stopping and taking some deep breaths periodically throughout the day um, to really ground in, maybe even take a walk like through the woods without your radio, without your anything, you know, without your phone ping in, um, you know, to really get in touch with, um, you know, seeing the change of the colors with the fall or whatever, um, and however that shows up for you. But, um, definitely think there's an opportunity here for Leos to really tune into their themselves and their higher self and their spirit guides. Um, and I feel like their guides have been trying to reach them and it's just been too noisy. And I don't, like I said, I don't just mean volume noisy. I mean, noisy as in doing too many things. What's well, pretty normal for Leos. Um, so anyway, that's what I got for Leos. Virgo, sun and rising. This is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on the 1st of November and the Taurus full moon on the 15th. So we're dealing with your third house and your ninth house. So <clears throat> third house is written communication. It's also um, neighbors or siblings. Um, ninth house is education, specifically higher education. Um, <clears throat> 
perhaps a teaching role or something like that. I feel like Virgos have almost forgotten that your role in life is to be of service to others. And by being of service could mean you educating people about something, but being of service could even mean volunteering. But I feel like there's something here about education or teaching um, for Virgos uh, or writing, um, maybe teaching a writing course uh, or something like that. Um, you know, something to that effect. And then we still have that um, Mars Pluto opposition with your uh, uh, Pluto in your fifth and Mars in your 11th. So social media, groups, communities, technology. Um, and maybe this is, you know, like a, a social media consultant um, for something, you know, maybe this is a social media manager type position for you, um, or something in the creative writing, um, trying to kind of put all the pieces together, because we have the third house, the fifth house, the ninth house, the 11th house, so I'm trying to kind of put all the pieces together for you. But my whole uh, thought here is that um, there is something here around you educating, or serving, others. And maybe this is a volunteer, you know, uh, teaching ESL or something like that. I don't know. I'm just throwing some thoughts out there, but there is definitely something here about, uh, you know, communication or writing, or like I said, siblings, um, short distance travel is also in that third house. So maybe it's you needing to get out into the community and getting off of social media, 11th house. Um, and really feeling into um, volunteering at a local library uh, or something like that. There are so many ways that you could kind of implement this, but I do feel like there is this Virgos have forgotten that they are um, to be of service to others, not to the extent that they self-sabotage their own goals and desires, but maybe their goal and desire is to be of service to others, is to help others. Um so yeah, um, and obviously Pluto's been in your fifth house since 2008. And so, you know, it's an area to look as far as like creativity and inner child wounds or even your relationship with your children um, or something like that. Uh, and so, you know, it's interesting because it's Pluto's been in Capricorn for 16 years. Maybe I should have said this like in a general way, but um, I'll say it here because you've got it in your fifth house, which is about children. Um but I know a lot of parents who have children that are, that are turning 18 or have turned 18 as Pluto's leaving Capricorn. So it's almost like their parental role is shifting right at the time of um, Pluto leaving Capricorn for the final time. And so, uh, you know, as Pluto moves in from Capricorn into Aquarius, which would be then your sixth house, um, your, you know, then we're going to be talking about your daily routines and your health habits and things like that. But for now, let's talk about kids um, and, and or your inner child. Maybe it's your inner child wound that's finally healed, that's finally transformed, that you finally transmuted it. And now you're like, okay, now I can teach others, other adult children, <laughs> uh, you know, what my experience was, maybe that's it. Maybe it's a social media group or a, a, a platform for adult children who had an upbringing similar to yours. And now you've healed and you're going to now move forward, um, with, you know, some new idea or new concept to help each other and help, you know, maybe raise the next generation to not have the experience that you had or something like that. Um, there was something that was said at a retreat I was recently at um, that said, it doesn't matter how we got here. That's irrelevant because we're already here. What matters is how we move forward, right? And so you got the victorious card. Um, and so this is one second. Let me not lose my page in the book. So this says victorious and it says, um, it is good to ask for help. Um, 
And I love that because it's like, you can be of service and still be served, right? You can volunteer and still be supported. You, you know, there's no guilt there, right? Because all of us have different um, helpful skills and helpful uh, ways of, of being. Um, and let's see what stone does it recommend? It says carry a uh, black obsidian, uh, which is one of the most powerful stones for um, protection. You can drink lavender tea to calm and soothe yourself. And it says, um, spend your time with people who make you smile and make you smile as much as possible. Yeah. You get to have joy, Virgos. You get to be happy, Virgos. You get to find joy. And if finding joy <laughs> means that you are volunteering to be of service to your community, by all means, by all means, that's what I got for Virgo. Libra, Libra sun, Libra rising. This is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on November 15th. So this is happening in your uh, Scorpio is your second house. Taurus is your eighth house. And so you're really grounding in some new relationships. You've probably had a lot of relationships shifting um, over the past year and a half, I would say, since the South Node has been in your first house, in your sign. Um, and also because Pluto has been in your fourth house uh, for the last 16 years, you've probably had some shakeups and stirrups with your home and foundation, your emotional stability um, and things like that, as well as um, of course, uh, with Mars being in your 10th house. Um, so your public appearance and things like that and, and public public appearance, public achievement, uh, your career has probably shifted. Um, so I have it that Libras have had a lot of change in relationship and now it's time to take new relationships to the next level. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, um, Lapis Lazuli um, is a stone that you can carry with you to nurture friendships. Um, and then uh, drinking lemon water can create clarity in your mind um, so that you can kind of um, be with the be with the friendships that are going to the next level as well as have the clarity to be around new people without falling into the old traps of 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 people pleasing and whatnot and going along with the program just because that's what everybody else wants um and so you got the friends forever card yeah friends forever card and it's growing together individually and i feel like this is something that libras have learned maybe over the last uh, a year and a half with the south node in in your sign but also with pluto in your fourth house like it's it's you know you've realized that you you get to be your own individual self as well as grow with the people around you without having to be the constant chameleon um who goes along goes along to go along right you get to be yourself you get to say i don't want to do that i'm not interested in doing that and then just because that's what everybody else wants to do doesn't mean that you have to do it um and, but that creates more authentic friendships in the long run is because you're saying no to the things that you don't want to do and yes to the things that you do want to do um and so you know be on the be on the attentive to where relationships are going now um, that you have moved through a lot of transformation over the last, if not year and a half, certainly over the last 16 years with Pluto in your fourth house. And so hopefully once Pluto moves into Aquarius, your home life situation will take a chill pill um, and uh, you'll be, you'll have some stability there for a while. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what I see for um, Libra. <clears throat> Scorpio, Scorpio sun, Scorpio rising. Happy birthday, Scorpio suns. 
Uh, and happy risings to Scorpio risings. Okay, this is your time to shine. Um, and so, or glow, <laughs> however you want to look at it. So this is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on November 15th. So of course, be attentive to um, nine degrees Scorpio and 24 degrees of Scorpio as that's where those moons will be peaking. Um, and you're also, so that's your first and your seventh house. Uh, and then you of course are finishing up work with Mars in its opposition to Pluto. And that is the ninth house, third house. And so, um, I feel like Scorpios have been through kind of a, almost like a rebirth process um, transformative process. And that's the, you know, the, the core of Scorpio is they're constantly transforming. Um, they resist it like a mofo, but once they, once they kind of get into that mindset of being able to transform, transmute and transcend, like there's kind of no stopping a Scorpio from going after what a Scorpio wants. Right. And they'll, you know, if you think about a scorpion, it stings whatever it's in its way or what it's what it deems as a threat. It's a it stings it. And so as we move through the Scorpio season, um, and as uh Pluto finishes up in your third house, um, it's really about like you've had this massive change of mindset right and and it's kind of like you know you've probably been through like the dark night of the soul or been through some dark days um that now you're coming out the other side pretty unstoppable pretty 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 unstoppable and pretty much ready to take on the world um and so you know and this is something with like that mars and cancer like what are you actually nurturing as far as education as far as travel as far as um even like something like a you know something new something foreign something um international or something like that um and you know, and what's going on with your relationships and partnerships and what's shifted there, um, you know, and so it, lots of places to look here, but I really feel like this for Scorpios, it's just a matter of like your individual self is finally shining through and you don't care about the judgment of others. You're not so concerned about it. You're not so concerned about like, well, if, if they don't like the fact that, that I'm going through this thing and that I can't get together today, that's, that's, that's on them, not on me. Um, you're kind of just not afraid to be yourself at this point, um, proof in the pudding or the card deck identity. Um, and this is just, you know, it's, it's, you're not afraid. You're not afraid of, um, hold on, let me read the actual message on the card and then I'll talk about the resources with it. One second. Um, Oops, if I can get it to go the right way, that would be phenomenal. Okay, it says identity. Uh, it says make your own choices. Absolutely. Your choices are that. They're yours. Own them. Own them. Even if it ends up blowing up in your face, that happens, right? We all make a choice and then we're like, oh, crap what was uh thinking that was just not but it's okay because you can roll with it and i think scorpios have a tendency we all do this right we have a tendency to like make a choice and then it blows up in our face and then it's like i should have never done that and i'm never going to do that again when the reality is is that maybe you just abruptly did it and yes you should do it again because it might go differently now that you've kind of like learned from it um, and then in the booklet, it says, um, Carrie Cornelian or Cornelium, Cornelian, Cornelian as a totem for personal power and confidence in your choices. Um, the T recommend recommendation is turmeric, which provides clarity and independent thought. I highly recommend turmeric. I like turmeric though. Consult a physician because if you are on di different medications, turmeric can interfere with them. Um, but I do like turmeric a lot. I use it a lot for inflammation and whatnot. Um, but 
I think there's just something here, Scorpios, about you. You know, you you've you've identified yourself as something, whether it's a writer, a teacher, an educator, um, you know, a friend, a loyal friend, um, someone who's willing to allow people to be themselves around you, and you were able, you're able to hold space for them, um, that sort of thing, uh, you know. And so I, you know. It's it's commonly known that somebody who's a Scorpio maybe has like tattoos or piercings or purple hair or, um, you know, has kind of this like wild appearance. But like, think about that. Like, you know, if you think about like a, um, a I'll use a biker as an example, right? A biker who often has like wears leather, wears chains, has tattoos and all of the things, but they're some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And they'll also, you know, be loyal and, and defend you. Um, and so maybe tune into your inner biker self. Um, and so, and, you know, just because you're Scorpio, Scorpio sun, Scorpio rising, you don't have tattoos, you don't have piercings, you don't have purple hair, but that doesn't mean that you're not loyal. That doesn't mean that you're willing to defend your friend's honor or support your friends or whatever. Um, so just be yourself, be authentic, make your own choices and be confident in them. Don't make your choice and then have that caveat of, I don't care if anybody likes it or not. That just sounds really shitty. It sounds childish. It sounds shitty. Um, because that means that that still feeds into that external validation of you don't care what people think of you versus like, I made this decision, I'm sticking with it. And it's because I want it, not because of whatever anybody else is saying, right? People are out the outside of you are going to judge you no matter what, it doesn't matter. But the point here is that you really want to make choices based on the beat that they bring you joy, that they bring you happiness, that they make you smile, that make you have a good time and that you're doing them for yourself and not to be defiant to other people or piss people off. That may happen as a consequence, but that is not your problem. And that is not why you're making that choice is kind of where I'm going with that. Um, so yeah, so there you go, Scorpio. Happy birthday, enjoy your season, happy Halloween and all of the things that go along with the wonderful gothic dark world of Scorpio. Okay. Sagittarius, Sagittarius sun and rising. This is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on the 1st of November and the Taurus full moon on the 15th of November. So Scorpio is your 12th house, which is the unseen, the unknown. It's the subconscious. Um, and so this may be a time of year where you have more difficulty sleeping. Um, and then Taurus being your sixth house, which is a health related house. Um, and so this could be about your health routines, health habits, food, nutrition, all of the things, your daily routine. So again, you know, this could be a time when you have disrupted sleep or, um, or you sleep really stinking well. Um, <clears throat> and you may not sleep as well this year. It's simply because we do have, um, um, Mercury also moving through your 12th house. And then of course you have Pluto in your second house finishing up, but he's in an opposition with Mars in your eighth house in cancer, um, which is perhaps, um, kind of like opening up almost a portal for you to really connect with the occult or the unseen occult is not a bad word. It just means unseen. Go look it up in the dictionary. Um, and so we've got a lot of like that, that eighth house, 12th house activity going on in these water signs. Um, and so, you know, there could be just some mounting um, sort of fogginess for you almost um, where things feel very unclear. And so I would say kind of just tune into how you are nourishing your body, grounding nutrition, like uh, root vegetables and whatnot, um, and stay really well nourished. I would also avoid, you know, spirits, alcohol, things like that, or other intoxicants could contribute to disrupted sleep patterns um, throughout Scorpio season. Again, not medical advice, just, um, you know, reading astrology. So certainly consult a physician where necessary. Um, 
I also feel like there's a lot going on with intimate relationships because eighth house is also about relationships. Mars moving through cancer um, and the next upcoming retrograde. Um, there could be some things going on with money and contracts um, and whatnot. And so those are some things to be attentive to um, as well. And then you know, Pluto finishing up in your second house, you've learned a hell of a lot about your self-worth, your value, how you get money, how you welcome in money. Um, and so kind of keeping those pathways open um, to the current of money movement and how it's flowing um, and whatnot. Uh, and, uh, you know, and how that's working with your daily routine. Um and again, it's kind of, are you, how, you know, you're, you're physically nourishing your body with that full moon in Taurus in your sixth house, um, on the 15th. So, uh, the first, the, the first on November 1st, when you have that, that new moon in Scorpio, certainly stay hydrated, certainly, um, stay grounded, you know, getting outside those sorts of things. Um, and then, um, by the time we get to the 15th, you know, it's all about like nourishment and maybe it's like letting something go, um, or a shift in your, your routine or, you know, your work schedule so that you can better take care of your physical body. Um, and so, but definitely like some, you know, intuitive things going on, um, with 12th house, eighth house type stuff. Um, you've got the unseen card and this is, uh, trust your growing potential. You know, Sagittarius, you are not unlike anybody else. You can grow. You do have unlimited potential. Um, Scorpio in the 12th house, Cancer in the 8th house, that can be really potent with connection to God, source, universe, to angels, to guides, to, you know, higher sources of power. Um, and the stone that they recommend is, okay, amethyst for peace and citrine for light to, <clears throat> citrine for light to guide your way out of darkness. Um, and then the tea that they recommend is rose tea for self-love and acceptance and a hundred percent you know this is you know Sagittarius you may be the one experiencing um some sort of cognitive dissonance around your spiritual gifts because again we're all kind of in this you know uh conditioned programmed culture that these things are not not real or not acceptable but the reality is, is that they are a thing and uh, you could be getting a lot of hits and a lot of nudges, um, especially around the first of the month um, with regard to spiritual guidance or intuitive hits, <clears throat> intuitive hits, excuse me. Um, so certainly that amethyst and the citrine to, to support you in opening up that channel, that crown chakra, the, the third eye chakra, so that you can um, allow in the messages from your guides, from your higher self. So that's what I got for Sag. Capricorn, Capricorn sun and rising. This is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. And this will cover the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on November 15th. So, and then we also, of course, have Pluto finishing up in your sign. This is the last sun and rising sign video that you will hear me say, uh, Pluto in your first house. So <clears throat> that's based on whole sign. <laughs> um, and Mars in your seventh house. So potentially some stuff going on with relationships, partnerships, and whatnot. But the Scorpio, uh, Scorpio new moon is going to be in your 11th house. Um, and the full moon in your fifth house. So you've got some things going on with groups, communities, social media, technology, as well as um, stuff going on with inner child healing or children or um, you know, something to do with your heart centeredness. This could be you kind of reinventing uh, your social media presence. Um, 
reinventing, um, you know, again, maybe you're one of those moms whose kids are, or grow or, you know, 18. So your mom role is switching. So therefore all of your, you know, friendships, your friend groups and partnerships are all shifting and your social media groups are all shifting. That would be that seventh house and 11th house are both social, you know, both to do with, you know, with other people, partner relationships with other people. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's some shifting going on. There's some reinvention going on. You also might be just throwing a goddamn party because Pluto's finally out of your first house by the 19th of November. Um, but before we get there, you got to finish it up. So finish it up strong, um, you know, really feel into how you have transformed, what has shifted, what has Pluto dug up for you in how you present yourself in how you behave in public, you know, behave around other people. Um, what author, you know, what, what parts of yourself have you learned to accept? Um, what parts of yourself have you learned that you really want to make changes to? Um, and that kind of thing, since Pluto has been there for the last 16 years. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, this could have a lot to do with groups, communities, social media groups, uh, things like that with regard to Scorpio. And, you know, maybe that's just really shifting, really changing. Like, okay, I don't need the mom group anymore. I'm not a student anymore. So I don't need the student groups anymore. Um, you know, I, I, it, it's, you know, you're, you're outgrowing maybe like the young adult era and growing into the, now what do I do? And to be honest with you, I'm in my mid forties and I still don't know what to do with all the young adult activities, um, that I used to be a part of when I was a young adult, uh, you know, and so, and maybe you're moving into that age range of, of, of folks who are relocating to care for a parent, um, or something like that, or to, to be closer to your family. Um, and so in the fifth house Taurus, it's like, how are you nurturing, caring for your inner child or your children, or, you know, maybe you're a first time mom, um, you know, and as we move into, uh, uh, the Scorpio season, you know, maybe this is bringing up motherhood for you. And therefore, you know, that fifth house is completely applicable because you're like, okay, what are the, what are the things that I need to pay attention to now that I'm a new mom, you know, as far as developmental milestones and what does my kiddo need and all of those things. And so lots of changing, lots of shifts in relationships, in different groups and communities and whatnot. And so let's go to the dark magic deck. You got... Um, this is Cocoon. And this is consider your source. So who is your source for yourself? Um, you know, this is this is considering your own power. You've learned a lot about yourself in the last 16 years. I mean, whether Pluto has been in your sign or not, we've obviously all been through a lot, even in the last four years. So, um, you know, there could be this opportunity of like uh, even something like, you know, self uh I don't want to say self-isolating, but certainly like, you know, relearning who you are, who you're, you know, you were a, 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 a caterpillar and now you're in a cocoon and who's the butterfly coming out the other side. Um, and as far as the stones, uh, it says bloodstone, which is aligned with um, regen regeneration of life energies and um, our DNA. Uh, and then the T is cacao, C-A-C-A-O, to, um, to honor your roots, um, which is what makes me think this is about like an inner child thing. Um, you know, and really maybe honoring your ancestors, um, something like that. Maybe you've reconnected with family members, some older family members, um, or something like that. Like this whole Pluto transit, maybe even the nodes being in your fourth and 10th house. Um, you know, the, the North nodes been in Aries, um, which would be your fourth house. And so perhaps you've relocated back home and you are now like the, like I said, the adult child, um, helping out your older family. So maybe it's connecting to, um, your ancestors in support of who you are becoming and who you are um, emerging 
to be. So that's what I got for Capricorn. Aquarius, Aquarius sun, Aquarius rising. This is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on November 15th. Also, Aquarius, this is the last sun and rising sign video I will be doing where Pluto will be in Capricorn. He is coming into your sign before we get to the next sun and rising signs video. So get ready. Get ready. You've had a dose of this, a couple doses of this, but now we're going to we're going to have it for 20 years. Um, <clears throat> all right. So uh, Scorpio is your 10th house. <clears throat> so career, uh, public achievement, uh, your pu your public persona. I don't want to say persona because it's not like you have. a. Well, maybe you do. Maybe you are a different person in private <laughs> than you are in public. Um, and Taurus is your fourth house. Uh, uh, so home, your foundation, your emotional stability, your emotional management, things like that. And then of course we have the 12th house, sixth house of your, of Pluto in, finishing up in your 12th house and Mars in opposition in your sixth house. So I've had some stuff going on with your health, perhaps with Mars in Cancer um, for the last, what, since September, mid-September. Um, and so, you know, you're going to continue to have that going on. Um, and then uh, with the 10th house, 4th house situation, it's all about like, are you stable? I mean, you've got Taurus in your 4th house. So is your home filled with quality quality goods, quality furniture, quality, um, you know, it's not a matter of having the most assists, but it's having the best quality of things. Do you have the desk that you want, the the couch that you want, the pillows that you want, all of the things, um, your color schemes and all of that. Um, but then you've got Scorpio in your 10th house. So it's kind of like, you know, managing yourself at work, um, in your work and whatnot. And, uh, you know, and then you've got this 12th house, 6th house opposition with Pluto and Mars. Um, and so there's kind of this um, push pull going on with you, with your daily routine, your work, your coworkers, your uh, health habits. Um, are you nourishing yourself? Are you nourishing your emotional uh, self? Um, something that I'm sure a lot of Aquarians really struggle with. Um, but this is an opportunity to really feel into that um, and and sort of stay out of that avoidance, Pluto, in your 12th house. Maybe you've tried to just sort of sleep through the last 16 years. Um, but unfortunately, Mars is kind of waking up the 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 reality that you can't just push through. You've got to, you know, feel into something. Um, and so you know, and this could also be like Aquarians are completely shifting trajectories um, and going into some sort of 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 um, mediumship or innovation, innovative. Uh, what do I want to say here? Innovative, you know, work uh, of some type. You know, they don't want to work in a mundane um, job. They want to actually, I mean, I feel like Aquarians could really pave the way here with the Pluto coming into your sign. Um, Aquarians could really pave the way here for unconventional work that we get paid for or unconven unconventional ways of, of being in public. Um, and I don't mean that in like the, uh, the, um, uh, um, what the hell is the word? I don't know what the word is off the top of my head. Dang it. Uh, eccentric. There we go. Could be eccentric. Doesn't have to be eccentric, but it could just be that you're like going against the grain of like your community. Right. You know, I, I for me, I would not need to be very eccentric to go against the grain of the community where I currently live. Like I just didn't, wouldn't need to go that far outside of my comfort zone really to do that. Um, but my point here is that there could be some sort of of change in work, um, or job or, you know, whatever. Cause I feel like Aquarians are really digging into some sort of create creativity. That's very different. That's very innovative. And that would be typical Aquarius heading into Pluto and Aquarius. Um, and so anyway, just keep yourself open to what might be available for you as far as grounding in your home, your foundation, 
and what might be shifting, changing, or available for you in a new work or job um, trajectory or path for you to go on. So, uh, oh, card. Aquarians would like a card. Yes, they would. FOMO, fear of missing out. Uh, hold on. I need a magnifier. Magnifiers are good. Um, all right, FOMO. Uh, clear your vibes. Yeah. Um, I think you need to kind of clear space <laughs> for what's coming for you. I think things are going to be very different in like a very short amount of time for Aquarians. Pluto moves into Aquarius on the 19th of November. And so, uh, you know, clearing, clearing space for that to happen, um, clear your vibes, clear your energy, do some, you know, meditation, do some, uh, soul searching. Um, and then let's see, we have, uh, tourmaline to stay grounded. Um, we got the grounding practice of putting your bare feet on the floor, um, drinking mug, mugwort tea, um, and you can also do an internet search for mugwort and see what alternatives there are to that. I don't know any off the top of my head, but I mean, you know, holy basil would be another, um, or anything that would be grounding or earthy to teas like dandelion root or something like that, that could help you get grounded and stay connected to the earth. Um, Aquarians kind of like to be like way up here in the ethers and the cosmos and, and be way ahead of the game, but we got to pull you down to earth because we need you to be a part of Pluto and Aquarius. So um, that's what I got for Aquarius. And of course, Pisces. Pisces, sun and rising. This is your forecast for Scorpio season 2024. This will include the Scorpio new moon on November 1st and the Taurus full moon on November 15th. Um, and so we're dealing with your... Uh, 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 Ninth house, third house, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, ninth house, third house, uh, as well as the um, Pluto Mars opposition, which would be your 11th house, fifth house. So um, you've kind of got like, uh, you know, this potential, you know, to, there's obviously the potential to travel, to teach, to educate, um, to write, uh, third house support for writing. Um, and then of course, you know, you've got some things going on with maybe some inner child stuff that's being surfaced or pulled out, pulled up to the surface with the, um, um, Mars in cancer opposite Pluto in Capricorn. So there could be some, something to do with children, your inner child, your children, um, something like that. Uh, and then with, um, uh, Scorpio, your ninth house in your ninth house, like they're just, there's, there's, you know, maybe you're stepping up your game with education, um, or you're shift, shifting your role in education, or you might just be traveling. <laughs> um, either way, Pisces life is a dream. It gets to be a dream. Dreams do get to come true. So maybe you've always wanted to be an educator and now the opportunity has presented itself. Um, so dream big, make it big. Um, you can put an amethyst under your pillow to um, to provide to enhance your dreams or to provide clear, you know, to provide like connection in your dreams. Obviously, make sure that your bedding is comfortable and clean um, and cleansed and all of that. Um, this might also be a good time to keep a dream journal. What are you really dreaming about? Maybe you're really wanting to go to a higher position or a higher role in education, but not sure how to get there. And so this could be like your, your guides reaching you from through your dreams, through your sleep state. Um, so writing, journaling um, definitely could be a thing for you throughout the Scorpio season. Um, but yeah, tune into that, that, you know, the, that, that, um, you know, something that may 
surface with your inner child um, or, you know, something that comes from your heart space um, with Mars in Cancer could be bringing up something that you just absolutely have to nurture. You absolutely have to take action on. Um, or at least get the ball rolling on. And that may not actually come into fruition until, you know, next year. So don't, don't, don't lose hope. Don't give up on a dream coming true because, you know, as we're currently dealing with a lot of change happening, it doesn't mean things won't transpire or won't, won't be manifested. It just means there may be a delay, um, as we move for, as we move through, um, a lot of change in the world and with the planets and whatnot. So anywho, that's what I got for Pisces. And that's what I got for Scorpio season. Y'all, it's going to be a wild ride. Um, I really do feel like it's going to be a wild ride. I think for some of us, we're ready for it. We've pre been preparing for it this entire year. For some people, they could get knocked off of their you know, trajectory. Um, I still say keep an open mind, keep an open, you know, keep that open ability to surrender to surprises, to changes, um, because it is available for all of us to experience some sort of change. Somebody could drop a bomb on you, you know, tell you something that maybe you didn't want to know, um, you know, that maybe you've tried to deny to yourself. And, you know, these planets are not given up on you finding out what you need to find. And I think that's the thing, you know, I think, I feel like there's this whole thing, especially with like the truth or community or conspiracy theory community is like, everybody needs to know all of the things. Actually, no, most people only need to know what actually affects them. But unfortunately, we all have to find out some harsh truths about the world that we live in, regardless. So, but I feel like it's kind of, um, it's kind of not everybody's ready to hear it. And that kind of means that people are going to hear things that they don't really want to know, but also some people are never going to hear it because they simply don't want to believe that that thing, whatever that thing is, is going on in the world that they live in and then in the world that they were raised in. Um, and so and to be honest, like, I don't know, I, I feel like there's so many ways that we can focus on our own individual journeys and the people around us, the people we're connected to and make things go in such a beautiful way that like whatever happens on the political theater stage, the Holly weird stage, like all of those stages those won't even matter because the thing is, is the more you're into yourself and your projects, the less that shit even matters. Yeah, go vote, do, do the responsible thing, but you know, like pay the bills, do the responsible things. But you know, on the day to day, is that really like the biggest or is it your kids or your community or your the book you're reading or the the new study that you're up to or the research that you're up to or the move you're about ready to make or you know the the nutrition and fitness plan that you want to be on yeah so i don't know turn off the social media turn off the news media turn off the tv period go read a book go connect with the earth go you know, go see some hot springs, go to Niagara Falls. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Anyway. All right. That's what I got. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, all of the links are below. If you would like to get a wellness astrology consultation, a single transit consultation, a full astrology consultation, all of those links are below. Um, and I just really appreciate you and thank you. Thank you to everyone who's given me feedback. I'm doing my best to make improvements and changes um, as they kind of come along, um, just, it's a work in progress, right? All of us are just trying to improve. And, uh, sometimes I would rather like study than to make improvements to <laughs> maybe that's not my attitude. That's not the attitude I should have, but I'm kind of leaning more into like connecting with people and really supporting people and using astrology to, um, help people understand themselves more than necessarily like, making investments into like cameras and stuff like that because what if I'm not always on YouTube and then I've like invested you know maybe I'm going to do something more in person 
Um, and I do have some ideas for that, but um, we'll see how that all transpires. Again, I'm not making any major changes until Mars stations direct and, and other planets make moves. So anywho, thank you so much for tuning in. I very much appreciate you. I'll see you in the regular daily wellness astrology videos. Um, so have a great Scorpio season. Enjoy it. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye for now.